did you so you watched Taylor, right? I did. Yeah. Good. Save it. Save it. I will. I was I I I just get get mad thinking about it. <laughs> it was silly like literal <laughs> anchor I, you know what i was thinking of i got so i was thinking of how as he'll do his rages yeah that's what i was doing after that episode oh, just no. in my head though okay well i'm, I'm curious to I, I think i've kind of hit the apathy stage so yeah but we'll we'll, see, we'll we'll talk about it for sure sweet well i think we're i think we're good well uh, before we get into everything there was one thing i wanted to uh, just briefly laugh at with you. Uh, did you hear that Hassan said today that? Oh, yeah. I don't know if today recently that Jeremy <laughs> gets the hardest job, bro. Him, it no, well, it was it was him, battery. It was him and Asmogold was defending him. Yeah, <laughs> and and it's just like it really is a uh, a bad take. Um, now, Asman like Hassan, as I understand it, he said that. As as I I haven't done any research to verify it, but uh, some sources have said he's never had a job, um, that he's always been in the one percent. That is well, yeah, his fam- know, family his, was rich. Yeah, his family's in credit. It, it a lot of this has been coming out recently, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, his family's always been incredibly wealthy. You know, his his uncle is one of the main guys of the Young Turks. Um, okay, like he's always had uh, people in influential. Uh, places around him like that he's, makes a whole lot more sense now that his yeah. uncle's in the well that's what and man I, okay. that, that's what you get with a lot of the not all of them but like a lot of the the guys that are like uh they call them like bread a lot of them are bread they call them bread tubers it's like a term i think for socialists um okay. jenna might be able to confirm the that name but they, a lot of them I, i'm pretty sure that's right a lot of them get called bread tubers um uh and uh um, it is stink Okay, that's yeah, good to know, Jenna. Yeah, Shank Uger. Um, and, you know, Hassan ha- is just one of those guys that, like, he espouses something very specific. Uh, he he espouses this thing that he does not himself really live up to. Um, yes. He, he uh, you know, he, he says he, like, believes in the working man, but, like, he's, he steals a lot of content from other people uh, in very blatant mm-hmm. ways. Um, well, he's a socialist. What do you expect? One of the biggest things that he got caught doing early on that really started this whole like thing of people paying more attention to him was that uh, he was watching other people's videos and reacting to them on stream. And then sometimes he would just leave their videos up on stream while he went to make like pizza or chicken nuggets or whatever the case may be. Like I have a meme on my phone um, that's like uh, – it's like something like typical uh, – Hassan stream or whatever. Ugh, this update for, oh my gosh, dude, the updates for iOS are so annoying. Oh yeah, dude, just, I stop updating after it just, six months. It just with sent me Apple. like a whole bunch of. Um, man, let me see if I can find this meme. I know it's in here somewhere. I'll find it later and send it to you. It's pretty funny, but it's basically just his chair. You know, it's like typical <laughs> Hassan stream, and it's just a, a picture of a chair, an empty chair. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, like I heard I, about that and it's, it's ridiculous too. Cause like, don't get me wrong. Um, it, it can be taxing on you. Um, I don't want to take away from the fact that like, uh, being, uh, 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 okay. So I guess it's different depending on kind of what you're doing. Um, like game streaming sometimes it's more of like a mental thing where after a few hours, like you do get tired, you know what I mean? Like it's right. But it's not. It's not like a lot of other jobs out there, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. And 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 you get to, you can quit, you know what I mean? Like you get it. Like if I'm at work or you're at work and you're four hours into your job and you're just sort of like mm, I've had enough today or I feel like I've made enough money today, like you you don't get to just leave. No, you don't. I mean, you can you can choose to, but then you're out of a job. You can't right, pay your rent yeah. and stuff like that. Right. There's there's legitimate consequences yeah to, at his level well, and see that's he the doesn't thing. really have those consequences jenna, jenna saying that, saying that like streaming is zero percent hard work and i disagree with that like there's there's effort that gets put into it but it depends on the person and, and how much they actually want to put into what they're doing well, I, we're comparing right i mean streaming it's a comparison yeah it's it's not yeah. that there isn't hard work involved in it but it is not the same thing 
as like a uh, underwater welder. Yeah. You know or what, I, mean? what I do now, for example. Sure. Um, and and even pro- and what you do now as well. But like for me, I would take if we were actually making de- you know uh, money to where we could support ourselves, I would take this over what I do now all day. Oh yeah, uh, yeah because, most people would. It's, mo- it's enjoyable and everything. But I think uh, I think Eric July hit the nail on the head earlier. I listened to him talk about it briefly. He put out a video on it, and uh, I was thinking it too when I had heard that he had said that as well. But that I th- the reason why it's hard for Hassan is that um, he is faking. Like it's 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 not he's not being him his true self on stream, and so that's why his social battery is constantly depleted because he's having to fake and not be his true self. Whereas yeah, maybe Eric July speaking for himself, you know, he was like, you know, for me that's not the case. In my opinion, it's like streaming is hard, but I would rather. Or, I don't want to say streaming is hard. It can be taxing, I think, is a better way to say it. And that, yes, you want so, to put... Let me, you, could, you could put hard work and effort in preparing for the stream, right? And it's everything that comes before. And during the stream, there can be... It can have its own difficulties. But in what I do now and every single other job I've had, no comparison. Like, streaming is top 10 well, easiest no, jobs, here's top the, five. Hang on. Let me, because I, I feel the need to defend it just a little bit. Not him necessarily. But what we're talking about is like, it, it, you have to categorize these things in different places because right. it, it depends on the person and it depends on the thing that they're doing. Take a EFAP stream, for instance. That is yes. going to be harder work for Mahler in particular and probably some of the other guys on that stream than like what Hassan does on a regular basis. Like, yes, we're talking about the amount of time that they spend researching topics, the amount of the time that they spend writing notes and watching certain things. Now, yes, again, if we're comparing that to other types of work, it is not the same thing. But to just be like across the board, be like, it isn't hard. It's like that depends on what you're doing. Like you're you are talking about things that are mentally taxing. But yeah, we're talking yeah. about Hassan in that versus what other people do. So you ha- you you can't, it's not, it cannot be, because there's no nuance in that. To right. just be like, across the board, it isn't. Because you do actually have to put some sort of effort forward. And typically, the more effort you put forward, the better things are. It's kind of like with acting. Like, acting takes a certain amount of work, but when we when we hear actors talk about how often they, uh, like, oh, my life is so hard, or like they, they try to pull that stunt, Every, it's kind of similar to the Hassan thing. Everybody looks at them and be, and it's like, you don't have to deal with the public all day. You don't have yeah. people calling you on the phone pissed off because of something that like a coworker did. Right. You, know you don't I mean? have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then plus, it's different. with streaming, I mean, yeah, you got to please your audience in that sense, but you don't have to please, uh, you, there, is, there isn't, you don't have to please your coworker, your superior, your boss. You can choose how many hours you want right. to work. Guess what? If four hours is too much for you, you can say, you know what? I'm only going to do two hours. And it's a perspective thing, too, because someone like Hassan, who has made you know millions of dollars off of sitting at a, at a computer or whatever, talking about how hard it is for him, no one is going to have any uh, sympathy for him because well, of that. It, it, to, it'd be the same thing I for me. I do want to stick up for him a bit. And I do want to say, you know, as far as with him stealing people's content, at least as a socialist, he's consistent with stealing. <laughs> yeah. There's consistency yeah, it, it there. It belongs to the know? people after all. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it's like, that's the biggest thing is like, say you and I were in a similar position to Hassan and we were just like, oh, streaming is so hard. It's like, no. I mean, like, it's, I would say like, it's hard for us. But it's because of everything that we have, everything else that we have going on in our lives. Yes. So it's like that, it's that added thing. So, like going on, you know, like technically Mexican stream last night, you know, it's like I get up at 4 a.m. pretty much every day uh, for regular work. Um, I also have another side job. Um, I, uh, and then we do this. And then so Mm -hmm. when I'm on his stream until close to 11 o'clock at night, my choice, by the way. So, like, not a, not a complaint. It's just a, a statement, a yeah, it's just a statement of of how it works. Um, you know, I don't typically get to bed till you know close to eleven on a night like that, which isn't normal. Nor- normally, I am a, a, a responsible adult and, and go to bed at a, a regular time, so I'm not cranky in the morning. Um, and then you know, I get up and I go to work and I do my best not to complain about something that I chose to do. You know what I mean? It's like that 
that's just what you do. Yep. That's how you get through it. Because to be honest, nobody like I, I, nobody wants me to get on on our podcast and be like, I had to stay up late, and you know, well, because at the end of the day, it was it's my choice to do those things. I don't. <laughs> I didn't have to go on that stream. You know what I mean? But I I enjoy doing it. I love talking about this stuff, um, and I enjoy uh, you know some of the uh, the arguing among it too, or the debating among you know people who uh, over these different topics. Um, yep, that's the stuff. Or like that, myself, yeah, I couldn't. You, you talk about everything else we have going on because of both of our jobs and schedules and everything else we have going on. Obviously, we want the podcast, you know, to be our full time job, but. Uh, I wasn't able to make the stream yesterday because I had to work. And that's you just, know, I had yeah. To, yeah. You know, and so, sometimes, sometimes we put the thing that, you know, puts food on the table above this because we have to, or something gets in the way and it's just like, Hey, look, this, that's the, the state of it. Sometimes we have to, to cancel a week or do it on a different day or stuff doesn't get, uh, done immediately when we'd like it to, because things just get in the way, you know? Yep. No, exactly. So the same reason why we haven't done the more episodic reviews of, well, I mean, we have done with Halo, but Some, you know, putting out we're still, content. Yeah, we're still doing it, just not like we were. Um, yeah. It's, it's just, just that, difficult. Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff going on, um, and that stuff takes time, and you know, time is costly. But if, so, but if this was our full-time thing? It'd be right. different. <laughs> it'd be different. It'd be, yeah, it'd be sure. totally different. We'd have way way more time to be able to, to get yeah. that kind of stuff out. It wouldn't be the issue that it currently is, you know? Um, so and yeah. we kind of have to make exceptions for that. And I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of spending like multiple hours talking about just like garbage. Like I really, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this week because I, I mean, I don't know if Shogun is going to turn out to be good. Um, I really hope that it is. And I hope the same thing is for Dune, but I'm at least looking forward to watching those shows, uh, or like the sh Shogun is the show. And then, you know, um, and then Dune, Dune, Dune. yeah, uh, because for once it's like, uh, it's like something that, at, you know, I I feel like at at minimum I'm gonna be like, eh, it was all right, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we're gonna be into the territory of like, why do they keep doing these things? Like, what is like, not frustrating? Like Halo, for example. Right. I don't or, know if you want to go ahead and get in uh, talk with that, but I mean that's. I was apathetic with Halo up until the last episode. Then the last episode, I was like, just forget you for insulting me and wasting my time. Yeah. Sincerely, I just got a 45-minute episode of pure just straight crap with Master Chief. It, it's, it's sincerely the bait and switch. of Ma you're, you're expecting Master Chief to get his armor and eventually be fighting. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of uh, inconsistencies up until, you know, the battle and everything that I could talk about, but it's finally we're going to get to see him in his freaking armor and fight uh, right. some Covenant. Nope. 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 He just goes the entire freaking episode with no daggum armor on. And, <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. I just, I could rip that episode, that last episode, a freaking new one. You know, you get a... It, what bothers me is hearing so many people. It's fine if people want to say, hey, I was entertained by this episode. But they didn't say that episode is a 9 out of 10. Oh, or bro, no like way. Positive because we got to see the freaking you know Covenant tank, with the, the Wrath, the oh, Wraith, whatever it's called. And we got to see, you know, uh, this. Uh, we got to see some there was Covenant, ghost, some elite. Right? Wasn't there a yeah. ghost in the episode, too? And it's like, come on, the Needler and everything. Oh, it's, yeah, the Needler. Yeah. Come on, you got to see the tape because a blind guy freaking was running at it. Easy as day to shoot and kill. And they've been building up the elite supposed to in the Covenant to be these merciless, like uh, top of the food chain apex killers. Right. And they can't shoot a blind guy running at the tank. Yeah. It's it's pretty, you know it's that and was, a blind guy can shoot a freaking grenade launcher. Oh yeah, he's like <laughs> dead on, with, you know his accuracy, and, I, and I'm just like that I, can't. Yeah, I, that I, had to be written by that had to be written by uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers. There is no way it's like, really paramount. That oh my gosh, yeah, it's really immature, um, and it, it is really frustrating that they're like, 
well, we don't want to put Chief in his armor, and so we need to come up with this excuse that they basically like stole it away somewhere that he can't get to it. So, oh well, guys. It's just like, it's it's hardly Halo. Like, if this is what you wanted to do, they and I think someone had mentioned this on a comment recently, they should have just done ODST or something that was specifically about the Marines in this scenario and not about Master Chief. The problem is, is yeah. that it's Halo and people want Master Chief, but... At, at this point, with what they made, they should have just done something a little bit different. And you know, Chief shows up occasionally to to help you know save them in a in a last ditch effort or whatever. That just something different. And this is I just I uh, I I just can't I I can't be bothered to even care or have any sort of um, things like happen in it. And I go, oh. Okay. Yeah, and, they revealed the first death, right? Bro, and when, it's like, who cares? When Ka- well, the fun. It was really funny to me. Like, there's stuff that, and again, we talk about this all the time. But like, the thing that a lot of these shows keep doing is that they will, instead of just like show, sit, take um, the corporal or whatever her name is that you know she's in like a Perez. bunch of this stuff. Yeah, Perez. And she goes, oh, my family. And then Chief basically goes, well, they're dead. And then they just move on from that. And she's like slightly bothered by it, but. Not as devastating. Oh, uh, you're right too. By the way, they're definitely setting that up to be a. a there seems like yeah, there seems to be some sort of budding, and, and it's so funny. Do Quan has taken a back seat this season, and it somehow has gotten worse. Yeah, um, you know, Th- this uh, last this Miranda, episode was worse than the. <laughs> they finally mentioned Miranda in this episode. Oh, I know. And then, like, uh, d- my my favorite thing ever is that they just like they basically killed off. Uh, the the male diversity hires in this episode. Did you notice that? Oh yes, I did. The three, I did the that. three, uh, I'll say main characters. Even though the blind guy has only been in a couple episodes, but like three, you could, uh, major ish characters in the show, um, all black, are dead now. And when yeah. when Keith, I wish it would have been Kai and Riz instead yeah, of that. Yeah. Me too. I, Riz makes no sense. It's like Riz was she's hurt. Like though, it doesn't make any sense that she's still alive at this point. Like I don't understand why. Yeah. It's just it was bad. Like all the deaths are very underwhelming. Um, very underwhelming. I can't was, believe they kill Keys off before dude, you get the Pillar of Autumn as well. Yeah, like, Key, Keys is really funny to me because I was like, well, I bet he just wanted to be off the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's dude, not, and it's funny. Yeah. Not even the even the setup for it. And everything is just so bad. Lame, the jackals dude. are just staying there, They're not standing fighting around. and shooting anywhere. Yeah, he, just, we're just going to wait. Yeah, everyone says that the, the ship, the 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 gas is in the air, and we're about to get exploded and die. So the ship can take like just come. It's on, so dude. stupid, dude. I, I it, it sucks because again, uh, under more like competent management, that show could have been pretty cool. Okay. And uh, to be honest, I like the guy that plays Keys. Oh, you I know. do too. I, yeah. I, I feel kind of bad for him that this is what he ended up with. He see the guy who plays Keys. Uh, let me figure out his name. But he seems, you know, I, I can't. I'd have to think about it and uh, check his IMBD out to see if he was in anything else I've seen. But at least in the Halo show, he seems like a a, a good actor. You know, he's yeah. at least been my uh, favorite. One of my favorite characters, uh, which, you know, I mean, this is Halo, so that's not saying much. I do think the guy that plays Soren does a good job, but oh my gosh, dude, the lines they give him. And that's how I feel with a lot of this cast, you know, in defense of them. I just think about the lines they're giving them and the dialogue. It's so dumb. The whole, like, bringing in the blind guy and his boyfriend... I don't even know what the point of it was. And it's like, who cares? He, like, kind of helps Riz and then dies. Yeah, and it's just like, what are we do? What are we doing? You know, um, and, yeah. yeah, and and so ultimately, it's just like, yeah, it's it's a pretty. I mean, I guess it in the course of. I, I would. I think I would take more of things like episode four than I would of previous episodes, because at least it's just stupid action versus people sitting in rooms. Just like really bad dialogue, you know. Yeah. And but the, and this yeah, is I completely agree. and it's funny, dude, because I think this is kind of similar to what they did in season one, where the mid-season episode was the one that everyone was praising, like, "Oh, it's finally Halo," and then they're they're just gonna go right back to 
what they were doing before. People sitting in rooms and talking. Yeah. Um, I didn't listen. Re- I don't really go ahead. I'm I, sorry. Um, her, her name's slipping my mind right now. The blonde lady. I didn't realize she got out of whatever Halsey Halsey. Thank you. I, I didn't realize she got out of whatever, um, like thing she was in. Oh you know yeah. That's because the power went out. Yeah. The um, little, Oh, fake right. Rooms, DJI room. So it woke her up. I just didn't, for whatever reason, I didn't even realize that happened. And I, I was like, wait, is is she still in that? And then at some point, something happened in the episode, and because she was like, "Oh, I know oh, the way." Huh? Which one? Oh yeah, yeah, Halsey. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, just Halsey. making sure. Sorry, you said something that made me think maybe oh, you were talking no. about Mackie. No, Halsey's like, I know the way out of here. And um, is it Soren? He was like, Yeah. Uh, and then like he follows her, and then I go, Oh, she must have gotten out at some point. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't remember that happening, but whatever. Yeah, it's because of the covenant. Uh, uh, apparently got the power supply to the city and torched it, um, and thus she was able to escape because all the power went down. And if they would have just been faster, you know, more, uh, if they would have gotten to Cortana more expeditiously, Halsey, for example, then hey, they would have gotten there before Mackie did. And I didn't even realize Mackie was still there. I didn't like why uh, didn't I, I, that whole thing dude, just her, happens randomly? Her whole and then exi- ha- her whole existence, Mackie's whole existence so far in this season, has been to keep Master Chief from dying. That's like all. <laughs> that's she, it. That's pretty much all she's done. And I love how uh, Soren throws a grenade and it explodes. And okay, Soren, he's been Spartan. That's fine. Like you know, he has that training. And you yeah. know, aren't the Spartans? I think in this universe, kind of super soldiers in a sense. Whereas Halsey's just a regular lady, and she got thrown into the wall like she would have had at least some broken bones if not would have gotten killed yeah nothing just well physics that happens in physics in general in shows nowadays it just doesn't seem like it matters it's it's Uh, it's all about the quote-unquote drama of a scenario rather than making things make sense in the world that's been built um and they well you know i i don't know how uh, you know, Master Chief has this whole thing, and again, I think in in something that was a little bit better, his whole thing about being lucky, and that's just like one of his character traits. I'd be like, "All right, cool." It just bothers me in this because the show already kind of sucks. Yep. And so you're just like, ugh, like it just everything. Whether that was because I think that is um like canon. Um, this idea that he just has an insane amount of luck. Um, and he can't really explain why, um, he's like always the one that survives. Um, and it, and it like tortures him a little bit, you know, uh, cause they get into that in the episode. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's like, again, uh, under more comp, comp, uh, excuse me, competent management, uh, that would work pretty well. Um, yep. but it's, it's just one of those things that adds to the list of like nothing in this really makes a lot of sense. Um, power levels still don't make a lot of sense. Um, Narrative still don't make sense. Yeah, you know, this is supposed to be a big invasion of of uh, and reach, and gonna... it just seems extremely minor and too uh, small. It, it, the The epicness of it doesn't make sense. And the military I thought, strategy. I'm really confused. I'm confused a little bit about because um, I thought they flew to. Were they already on reach? And then when. Uh, I was about to call him Halo for some reason. Man, my brain. Uh, when Master Chief um, took the Spartans and they went to Reach, were they just on the same planet? And they went to a different part of the planet? Bro, I don't even know. Do you know I what know I'm talking about, Visig- though? Yeah, they went to Visigard, and I, I don't know if that's on Reach or if that's I, its own separate thing, because I'm not huge into the Halo lore or whatnot. The show didn't... Uh, explain it well, it's or not maybe doing I just a very good job of it. In yeah, enough, or maybe it's, a, a bit it's of both. probably a bit I mean, of both. I don't think the show's explaining because, in my mind, I was like, wait, I thought they were already on reach, and that, because when you get in like one of those pelicans, I'm thinking, oh, well, they're going off planet somewhere. But now I'm starting to think, well, maybe they were already on reach and they sent them somewhere else. See, let's so, see what the What's brave up, search Zach? engine has to say. <laughs> and also, Jake. Hello, Jake. <laughs> anyway, um. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I, I, but I don't, uh, I don't have much I else will to say, say about the episode. Just to let the good people know, hey, Zach's, by the way, uh, and Jake, that I texted David and I said, dude, I can't do this anymore. I can't watch the show. I don't mind covering it, you know, the last four episodes at a later point, 
but we can talk about the rest of the season when it's over. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm I can't do it week to week. I just, uh, this last episode, uh, Mike, don't insult me and waste my time. Like it, you want to do a, it's just like you said, they should have done something else. This wasn't it. And not only that, even if they did ODST or whatnot, this still wouldn't be a good show. It's not that. Oh, it's it the doesn't matter. Charge. Yeah. Well, it, this, this is the thing I was telling the guys on the stream last night for, um, technically Mexican, um, it, it's what we talk about here all the time is that the, it's all about making content. So you're churning things out. You, I'm, I am assuming a little bit here, but maybe you're getting a single rewrite, but you can tell between this and Avatar, um, there's not a lot of rewrites happening. There's not a lot of extra, uh, I, because some, you know, well, we can talk about it with Avatar. I don't know if you have anything else that you want to say. Yeah, let me just say a few, a, yeah. a few more things like, about Halo. But, like, you can tell that things, they feel rushed. They're trying to get them out on these really tight timelines, it would seem. And if that's not the case, I don't, I just, like, it boggles my mind how some of this stuff is making it past directors, editors, writers. Like, just at all of these different places where you go, mm, this doesn't quite work. Or, like, why are we mixing all of these storylines in here? Like, it, the this doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. Um, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of that kind of stuff going on with anything across the board. So, anyway, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say with Halo, you know, I, I, I kind of stated, alluded to this earlier, or stated actually earlier, that they build up the elite to be this unstoppable force, these excellent and skillful fi skillful fighters, and they should have just glass, like, just completely ran through a Master Chief and his team. It should have been essentially no issue because the Covenant had all kinds of advantages, oh, dude, including the Spartans so not having their freaking armor. No armor, no Number guns at certain yes. points. It doesn't It and, doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, nope. And then number two, that last, that battle scene you get with them going on the bridge, I don't know if you remember, but before that, they show the wide open area. And there's like three, four places I noticed right off the top that the Covenant could come from anywhere. And so it seems right. dumb. That especially since they have the higher ground, I imagine their ships have some kind of radar detection to know where a lot of these troops are stationed. But even if not, I imagine the elite have eyes and they can say, "Hey, look, <laughs> they're right in this area. Why don't we flank them and come from this? Flank them, come from the left, come from the right. We could probably, you know, send a few forces up front. I mean, you know, it, it's all just done just for that shot. And that's what yeah. I mean. It's the same thing with Game of Thrones episode three. You, the cinema, uh, season eight, the cinematography of <laughs> Specifically episode is three and about. yeah of season eight. Yeah. That scene looks good, but it doesn't make any any sense. Um, and that's yeah. the same thing with this. And I mean, I, I I think at this point, I could probably even argue it doesn't really look that good. Um, it's it's one of those things where they had this idea, and they didn't want to take the time to figure out how to make it work properly. You know, because uh, I I think they're probably with a little extra time and I like especially back in the day with uh uh Game of Thrones there was time to make a lot of that stuff work but D&D &D were just so ready to be done with that show I think they were making a lot yeah. of stupid mistakes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think they were over it. But uh you know it's interesting cuz you really don't I remember Vigo saying he was asked this question uh in an interview, do you get annoyed with people coming up to you? Uh, talking about uh, you playing Aragorn and Lord of the Rings and stuff. He, was, he said, not at all. That's one of the most positive experiences of my life. It, it really helped launch my career and stuff like that. I remember Orlando Bloom saying that he only got paid $174,000 for all three movies or whatnot. Um, and, you know, the interviewer essentially asked him, does that bother you or something? Next? And he's like, no, I, with everything that that gave me in life, I would go back and do it for free. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, for and, and so having this thankfulness for being a part of something, and you don't really see much of that. And with care and the attention that Peter Jackson put into it, I mean, yeah. with Lord of the Rings, we really got a special uh, time well, in cinema to have all three of those movies. And with this, with Halo, this just shows it's just not there. And I, and no, the, uh, so, I may have mentioned it. What? Hello? Uh oh to put their they just want to take halo and put it in their script you get what i'm saying oh and like their resume 
yeah, in, yeah, their, res- okay, in so- their resume and in their script. Like their script is already created, but hey, instead of you know, person Mel A1, it's going to be Master Chief. And so it's already kind of outlined and they're just pitching these IPs to get their right. scripts they've already have written made. So it's all, I think it, it's, it's probably across the board because like I can't, here's the thing, it's like this stuff has to get made. You have people um, in these positions where, you know, say you're like a lighting tech or you're someone who, you know, you're like, I, I need a job, you know, just like everybody else, like they're looking for work. Right. Um, and it sucks because when you live in the age that we do now, especially with media, where it's all about just churning out content, like get it all there. Everyone's telling you, like, get as much out as often as you can. It really takes away from the craft. And that's not the time. And there have always been deadlines, right? Like, de- I'm not yeah. talking about deadlines existing. I'm talking about what I perceive to be the kind of deadlines that are now required by Disney and a lot of these other companies to get this kind of content out. Look at, I mean, you have something like house of the dragon. Now season two could end up being garbage, uh, but they're, they've, they've kind of taken their time with it, you know, or with uh, Dune part two. I mean, uh, Dennis came out and said that he's focused on quality over quantity. So he don't, he doesn't want to talk about, yeah, a, uh, I'll, I'll forgive you for mispronouncing his name because I think he's like French. <laughs> his uh, his, his name? name's not Dennis. I think it's like Denny. <laughs> Denny. I don't care, dude. Uh, Dennis. Villanueva. Uh, <laughs> is that his name? No. Bill, uh, no. Uh, what's his What's his uh, name? Uh, I heard someone pronounce it correctly recently. Um, and again, he's one of the, it's one of those names that I know what you're talking about. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Uh, I I think. Hey, in my defense, I've never heard it said before. So. Di- I think it's. Denny Velnu. It's something close to that. Um, Denny Velnu. That yeah. sounds more correct. Um, but he's yeah, he's got a he's got an odd like European name. I think Villanueva. No, I don't. Denny Villanueva. No, I don't think you pronounce every letter in it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, them French names. You are Southern weird, hick. <laughs> them French names are weird. That has nothing. Damn French with names are weird, man. Uh, you know, well, we don't know anything about that down here. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm not in the South, boy. <laughs> You're from the South. You are not. No, I'm not. I was born in Washington. Oh, okay. <laughs> God. Uh, technically, that's what you sound like right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's, I think it's probably kind of soul crushing for a lot of people that have to work on this stuff. Um, yeah. and if any of the, the stuff that you hear from guys like Nerdrotic, who's got, you know, sources in the industry and Chris Gore, um, it is, it's soul crushing for a lot of these people because they're not getting to make, at, there was a time where in those industries, you got to make projects that you were probably pretty proud of no matter what it was. And so, and if you got on a project that was well received by a lot of people, um, you know, that was great for you and potentially like that was your career, right? Like if you think about it, I imagine mm-hmm. a lot of the people besides just the main cast on Friends, despite, I, I think that show is incredibly overrated, but, you know, it went on for what, like 14 seasons or something crazy like that? You've got, um, like, Grey's Anatomy has been on the air forever. I think it's still on the air. Um, it is. So, th- those sort of things, like, you have these different levels, whatever, but I imagine some of that stuff's not nearly as soul-crushing or, like, at least you have something steady that you can then move on to something else and you've got something kind of good on your resume to be able to move over. Whereas like with this, it's like, yeah, I worked on Halo or I worked on Rings of Power or like, uh, and it, that just sucks, man. Like having to have, I would think having to have some of that stuff for your portfolio, uh, would be frustrating, you know? Um, and, and in some cases maybe a little bit embarrassing depending on who you are. And that's why, man, honestly, so why with like a- actors sometimes like people just disappear because they end up in r- like roles that are not great for them and they're terrible career choices and it it ruins their chances. Um mm-hmm. like like Jake Lloyd doing um uh Star Wars episode 1. He pretty much stopped acting after that <laughs> after that. Yeah. Um and I I know there's some other instances of that but it's just like yeah it can really it can really mess up your career. Um and now we just live in this age where it's like it's just kind of this gross, like vicious circle all the way around because 
you have all that stuff that's happening on the like just say like the Hollywood side so like the production side of everything um, the reviewers are all giving shows that don't deserve and I say the reviewers but like we'll say like the access reviewers right so whether they're mainstream media ish types or they're like tiktokers or youtubers that are basically like selling their reviews away for access um yeah that's all really gross um but then you also have a lot of the the, the people who watch this stuff who are saying like oh no if you were a fan it, it like the fans love the halo show you know and it just it's it this it just all keeps kind of eating itself and it's gross and we're sitting here being like no this isn't very good it's like stop butchering these you know i think people are so desperate for content that reminds them of their childhood when it comes to specifically shows like halo yeah that well avatar too you know, man yeah avatar as well that they're really they're they're willing to take uh garbage you know just to be able to see something from their childhood and bring just, back those yeah. fond memories yeah. to some degree it's the now, jangling keys Ap- it's the jangling yep. keys that, that's exactly what it is now with avatar it's it, it's not no, halo's bad bad i i don't i'm not putting avatar in that that's just because i don't i probably I, don't have the nostalgia there oh no, it's do. not about nostalgia I, th- I think it's bad now you're probably right i don't think it's halo bad um but it's not good uh and no. people do de- people defending it as if it's like there's a I lot of stuff far with the movies uh so, ooh, movie that's a dangerous that that's a dangerous topic. i haven't seen the i haven't seen the movie in a really long time well let um, me tell you why the movie's only two hours long oh, f- oh hours. fair enough um that's a <laughs> oof. I saw the movie in theaters. That's the deciding factor. Yeah, I saw the movie in theaters. Um, oh, did you? So the first season of the live action is actually longer than the first season of the animated. Technically, Mexico oh, mentioned funny. that yesterday, and I was like, well, "They wasted so much time." Dude, um, that's that's insane. I didn't that realize crazy? that. Yeah, it's like I want to say he he. I mean, he said it was close to I, maybe thirty or forty five minutes longer. Um, it's a decent chunk longer than the animated. And I'm just like, what? And I know kind of what they filled it with. It was a bunch of stuff that they either made up or took from the sequel series. Right. Um, that didn't need to be there. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, I, I just, it, it's just more forgettable like we didn't need that in the same way that like we didn't need the halo show though the halo stuff could be more justified because of all of the like prequel content to the books that you could have worked with you didn't need a live action television avatar. show of avatar the peak version of it has already been created um and you're not going to you're not going to make anything better than that because would you say the same thing about One Piece? Mm, probably, yeah. I mean, I, I, as much as I um, do like the live action version of that, um, they at the at least with One Piece, right? Uh, it's the original creator has like full control over it, like he's making those decisions. And what mm-hmm. the live action does that the anime can't really do is it shortens the timeline. So if you don't want to watch a thousand episodes of One Piece, you can at least go to sort of a Spark Notes version of it, and you have that to potentially pique your interest. Hey, we we use Cliff Notes in these and, parts. Boy. And to be honest, if they had done a a now, I'll give them this: they at least there are like moments of things being like, I, I really don't like this show. I, I really don't like this show. I, I, it, it, it's incredibly frustrating. Um, the way that it's written. Um, right. I agree with you. I don't, but it, uh, I like the show, but there I, are moments where you go, Oh, okay. Well, at least you put that in there. Uh, at least that's something that is recognizable. Like there are things in it that that are recognizable. Um, but it just, it, just it, it still fails on so many levels for me that like I yeah. can't give this a pass. Like I I would never recommend this. And, and that's what I are talk- your biggest issues with it? Um, the writing, the directing, the pacing, the acting, 
Um, are there any specific scenes that come to mind? Um, uh, yeah, or part throughout the season for for all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I I think most of the the cat... like, what were your biggest what was your biggest aggravation? Was there a particular scene or scenes oh, in particular uh, yeah. that bothered you the most? So one of the biggest problems that i have with it and it's later on they so that you okay you know how you watch the whole thing right yeah okay yeah. so you know how um uh, i had to watch the cartoon too by the way uh, um Aang gets trapped in the spirit realm um and uh the three of them are there and uh sorry give me one second oh kai um, Bro, what was the freaking? Story oh saying? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Co. Um, Co. And <sighs> sorry, I'm trying to keep my thoughts oh, sort of uh, put like together that. for this. Yeah. Um. No, you're good. I I, uh, was, I was it, this. This oh, series yeah, seemed like they created it. I think I said during the stream with Technically Mexican when I got in the chat, I said it seemed like somebody told the writers about Avatar The Last Airbender and then they sec you know, kind of third hand wrote. Well that's what I was telling them was like spark from... it was like spark notes. So they, they gave them certain aspects of it because we had been we had talked about that a little bit. There's stuff in it where you go, Oh, well that was a thing. And then, uh, but it's like everything's out of order, or they do certain things that are like, hmm, I, why do they do that? You know, I got to go back and watch this really, M. Night Shyamalan version of this. It was really weird because <laughs> it, it seemed as if there was no connective thread through each, like most of the scenes in each episode, mm. if that makes sense. It's like, well, it depends they, on, like, it, said, it, let's do this scene, then let's do this thing, but it just doesn't, the flow and the, uh, natural direction to it yeah. just didn't seem to it just seemed odd and out of place so okay so what i was and, and go ahead what i was talking about earlier with uh that that stuff that happens later on so like ang katara and Sokka get trapped in the spirit world right um they all get separated um they're like facing their fears or whatever and then ang figures out how to get out um he meets ko earlier than he should because Originally, the entire point of him meeting Ko was so that he could find out uh, about the the uh, sun and moon spirits in yep. the Northern Water Water Tribe, um, and he gets warned ahead of time that he has to maintain. and And this is again, this is a problem with Aang, where he he is not the character that he is in the show uh, almost at all, um, because he is hyper emotional. Um, he's like a, he's a 12 year old, you know, right. He's, he's supposed to not have all of that stuff put together. Yeah. Um, he's not supposed to be self-controlled. Right. His emotions. Right. He's, he's actually the opposite. He, he reacts, um, in incredibly like emotional Jenna. ways all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so he, uh, you know, he runs in a co too early and they have this entire conversation that's supposed to happen after, uh, they get to the Northern Water Tribe. So he does all of that, right? And then at some point, um, he meets his old mentor, and his old mentor tells him that he needs to get a hold of, um, I think, Kiyoshi, the previous Avatar, uh, which in the series is something that happens way, way earlier on. Yep. Um, and so for some reason, they decide, well, Aang has enough time to leave the spirit realm, travel to this firebending temple, have an, a, a totally separate adventure um, in order to do some certain things so that he can go back and get Katara and uh, Sokka out of the spirit world. And I, I, they, they mix something like three or four different episodes of uh, The Last Airbender into this like hour-long thing, and it's really bad and really weird and doesn't make sense because... Like, why are you pulling Aang completely out of this current scenario for him to go do something else in order for him to go back? Like, it's it's weird, you know? Like, the way yeah, that they decide. It's, it's odd. It's almost like the Halo stuff where it's like they t they send them somewhere to immediately call them back uh, to do something else. And I just... <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking yeah. when it happened. That's funny that you said and that. It's, it's weird because, like, I again, I still don't really care much for the first few episodes of it, but they're definitely a little more focused. Um 
especially the second episode, uh, which is maybe the strongest episode. Uh, and some of that, I think, is just because the show's a little more focused. Like, if it, they're, like, in one location dealing with one thing, even though all of that stuff is still incredibly out of place. Um, and, you know, it, I, I had said this last night, but the... Uh, all of the characters, like, our, our three protagonists, and it's not just them, it's a lot of the other characters, like, they're moving through um, character development at, like, breakneck speed, and some of them don't really have any. Um, yeah. But they're not allowing the show to breathe, they're not allowing the characters to breathe in the sense that um, Aang needs to be uh, a kid, and he needs to be making lots of mistakes. Um, he's... He's got a chip on his shoulder because he's the Avatar and he's naturally gifted. Um, and that causes him to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, there's an episode in the animated show in the first season where he accidentally burns Katara um, because he's messing around with firebending, firebending. and it gets out of control. Uh, yeah, it's I a thought really... it was kind of weird how, the, the along that note, some of the changes they made yeah. just to make changes that don't really make any sense. Like how what you just said along with how uh if i remember correctly in the show because i was only able to watch episode one i have wasn't able to uh run back through it but i did watch it growing up uh and i believe that ang teaches katara how to water bend um, doesn't he mm, uh, that stuff is all a little weird um they they help each other ultimately is the way that i would put okay. it um they they uh i i would i would probably argue that the two of them um push each other to become better um more than one of them is teaching the other you know like gotcha. ang imparts wisdom because of his natural skill as an airbender um but ultimately like katara doesn't really learn how to and katara is naturally talented so like one of the things they show you in the first ep like right off the bat is that she's strong like it's there's not yes. a question that she because she basically is the one that breaks Aang out of the ice like because of her anger and because she can't control her water bending that iceberg breaks and they find Aang inside of it, um, and then uh, as that season progresses, uh, she learns how to control it more and more and she goes through um, it, this this trial with uh, I think I can't remember what I I keep forgetting the name of the um. The guy that teaches her in the Northern Kingdom. Oh, um, Master Waterbender. Poo I can't remember Poo his name Me either. Or something like that. Um, he uh, he basically tells her, he's like, well, I'm not, I won't teach you because we don't teach women. You know? And yeah. she, and to some degree, this is what it is, but like some of her, her tenacity uh, pushes her to challenge him. And Master he, Paku. Paku, thank you. I got the P right. Um... And Paku gets to see her ability and goes, all right. He's like, I, and he has a change of heart, you know, yep. because he sees how, how talented she is. And it's not just that. There's a actual, like, familial connection because uh, Katara's grandmother was going to marry um, uh, Pumi. Or, yeah, like they were engaged or something, but um, her, her grand wasn't in love with him oh yeah, yeah. i watch it I, they've got this trailer up for m night Shyamalan's uh the last air or the last air <laughs> dude i wonder i just watched this trailer it's i gotta watch this again man you know people are, i remember it being really bad it is but really I'm like, bad is it, is it like bat uh bat woman bad cat woman bad mm, yeah. again i haven't seen it in so long i couldn't answer that question I don't know, man. Like, I'm watching some of the animation for the bending in it, and because everyone's going like, "Oh, the bending in this one's better than that," and I'm watching this and going like, "I don't." I mean, we'd, I, I would have to do like side by side comparisons, you know? Yeah, this is. You know, you know what I don't. So the television show. One of the things I don't care for in it um, is that every time they do bending, I feel like the screen gets really blurry. I don't know if yep. you uh, if you notice that, but it, there's some weird. Um, some weird stuff going on with the way that they use CG in this. Um, Aang is like CG in a bunch it's, of scenes that he doesn't need to be. Uh, yeah, it's very inconsistent because there's some spots 
where the CGI looks really good. And I don't... Like, and then there's other spots where it doesn't. It seems as if um, in some of the more expensive scenes, obviously, it looks really good, more the massive and epic. But then in almost every other scene, it looks bad. Yeah. That's the best way to say it. Because even him airbending, if he's in the shot, it looks bad. If he's not in the shot, it looks better. And... I would say the same for the others. I mean, the the bending doesn't oh. look. Yeah, yeah. yeah some it, of the, the, look the best. yeah some of the fire bending I think is all right. Um, that the fight at in the last episode, um, with uh, Zuko and Zhao, um, yeah. is all right. Uh, but I don't know, man. Like, it just it's it doesn't do a lot for me. Uh, ultimately, and like I, the exposition in the show is really annoying. Um, oh, dude! A it, lot of times they just turn to the camera, and yeah, they're just talking directly to the camera, telling you what's going on. And it's it's <laughs> it's like I because I had dude, sent that to the... you. I we're like when I started watching it, what was that like Thursday or whatever? Yeah, it was like we weren't five minutes into the show, and they're just telling you everything. Uh, it, that whole like the first thirty minutes of that show is basically just exposition dumps because they don't trust the audience to be able to understand what's going on. And you know, the audience is dumb dumbs. Yeah. They don't they know understand a subtext and subtlety. Right. Te- technically, Mexican made like a really good point because he brought up the uh, funeral scene from um, House of the Dragon. That the whole thing isn't. There's like no dialogue in the scene. It's just all these different characters shooting glances and looks at each other. Um, and you're getting a lot of the subtext of like what these people are thinking without them having to say a word. And there's actually quite a bit of that in that show. Actions that are taken, um, uh, the way that people like look at, you, at each other and things that are going on in it that is telling you a lot of different things uh, without having to directly uh, spell it out for you. Um and someone they 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 had asked me some question about it, and I was like, yeah, I was like, I feel like this show is is for people who can't. And what I meant to say was like, uh, you know, read into that kind of stuff. And I I got cut off at like read, and so everyone was. I thought that I it said it was like the show is basically for people who can't read. <laughs> <laughs> and I was yeah, like, dude. well, it's not what I meant. I was like, I'll stick with it though. It it's good enough. It's a good enough insult. And it's some people will say that as far as with the hey, pop culture. Key, and subtext that well it's a kid's show and it's like well this was originally a kid's show that had a lot that had subtext and subtlety to it and Bruh, I, why do people I, want their I, kids to be so stupid and just brain dead entertainment you know what i mean i yeah I've well never, that's what i was gonna say is never understood is that. that with tolkien one of the reasons why he disliked disney was because he thought that they dumbed down their material for children he thought that children should be given more mature material and as we have discussed with The Last Wish, for example, yep. you can make a good children's movie and a good TV show because Avatar, The Last Airbender TV show did it. And there be mature themes, subtext, subtlety that, you know, you can grow up and look back on and be like, oh, I didn't notice this. Like every time you watch it, there's something new to it. You find a new theme, a new uh, subtext in a scene, you know, all sorts of things. So... Uh, my other problem with this show was that it was way too clean. I mean, this is supposed to, yeah. you know, when you get to the Waterbender tribe um, in the South Pole, wherever it was at. Yeah, South Pole. Uh, you know, it, them, for example, it's like, okay, they have a destroyed, essentially, camp, right? And, you know, uh, Sokka's been the makeshift leader, putting everything together as best as he can without mm-hmm. any real good training um, or uh, training that didn't last long enough. And, you know, they, they fish, they eat, they, you know, you would think, you know, their clothing would be tattered and worn down and more, um, just lived in and, and, and the world are around, around them rather than so pristine and clean. Um, you know, I don't know, it, it was bothering me the same thing with the airbender tribe at first, the same thing with, oh, the earthbenders, it's been a hundred years in this war, this war, and you couldn't really tell. Um, I mean, just every scene, it seemed like everyone was washing their clothes and keeping them nice and tidy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird, man. And I I, I, I told them on the, the stream last night that 
it just looks like all these other kind of fantasy esque shows or it, the Wheel of Time, uh, Rings of Power, this The Witcher, uh, The Witcher. They all have this like similar look to them, and it's just this like bad streaming TV look. There, there's nothing yeah. about it that, that, yeah, the worlds don't feel lived in. Um, Seems like I'm watching cosplay. To some degree, yeah. Um, and that's the thing is, like, I think some of the costume design, had they had they done a little bit more um, with it, I, I think it would have been fine. But, like, man, there's a lot of CG in, in it. And, like, it, stuff just doesn't... Everything did... It, it just kind of felt off. Um and, it did, and it just mm. you go and you watch Lord of the Rings, and you see like every person you meet, it generally seems like hey, they've been living in this world. Things are tattered, yeah. Things have dirt on them, dust on them, uh, cobwebs, etc. Uh, clothes are worn, um, and you know you, these shows we just mentioned, everything is pristine, even though they're trying to tell you that no, these people have actually been living here. There's been war going on. There's been all all this hardship, but it doesn't seem that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, they and yeah, they so seem they seem kind of more well off than you realized and you're you're telling me something but not showing me yeah. it, you know. Well, and the thing uh, is is that like when they tell you certain there are things that so for instance, like I wish they wouldn't have I I'm in the camp of like all of this uh stuff that where they they were showing you like pre or like Aang before he gets um like frozen or they show you like Katar, the stuff with like Katar's mother dying um and it's Sokka's mother too, but you know what I mean. Like she's the one that that's like her, one of her things in the in the season. Um. Oh, dude, and uh, the one of the ones that actually got made me mad is the, this whole thing where like Sokka's emotional moment is where like he overhears his dad being like, he's not. I actually didn't mention this on the stream last night. So there's that 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 when they're in that uh the spirit world, and. Right. So it's revealed that like Sokka's big like emotional moment is that his his dad didn't like believe in him and it runs completely contrary to the point of the ice um I can't remember what they call it like ice surfing or it's like they're they're supposed to be going th- surfing through um uh icebergs and it's what the point of it is, and it's not taught by his father because his father is like out fighting. Uh, they run into someone else from uh, the southern tribe uh, in one of the episodes, and he's like, he he shows Sokka, he's like, you never got to do this, so like let me take you. He's like, the rocks here are similar to that, and the whole point is that it's about teamwork, and that he can't do it alone. But then in the show, they do this whole thing where they go like, oh you know, Sokka couldn't handle it himself or whatever. You had to help him out. And it's like, yeah, because the point was is that you can't do it by yourself. You need people with you to, like, be extra pair of eyes. Like, And, of course, they don't show any of of this in the show, like, what the whole point was. The only reason that I I know is because it's in the animated show because part of the episode is him, like, steering his way through all of these rocks, and he he needs Katara and Aang to help him overcome that. And all three of them kind of like pass that, and because the the show, the original show, um, is about the three of them growing. That first season in particular is about the three of them growing closer together as family. Um, and the Ang may have lost everyone that he used to know, but he's discovered these people that he now cares about as much, and they care about him, and the growth that they have along the way, and the different things that they have to deal with with their selfishness and um different ambitions and it's like it's incredibly mature for a um an animated nickelodeon show at the time i mean there wasn't anything like that on nickelodeon it's one of the reasons it got so popular because it wasn't just the kids that liked it there were a lot of adults that were watching it too i liked it too yeah oh shoot my kids actually watching a good show yeah i i wasn't super into it when it originally aired but jake let me borrow his dvds um after the whole thing came out um because he's a pretty big fan of it and i was kind of telling him some of the stuff that was that like i hadn't finished the entire thing yet but i was telling him some of the stuff that had happened in the episodes that i had watched and he was just like what in the world are they doing um and uh but yeah he let me watch it i watched like the whole thing in a weekend just all all three seasons because it's uh it's pretty easy uh to watch you know yep 
Um, you you know, like 20, the, 25 minute episodes. Well, yeah. And think it's like 22, I think. And if you think about it, uh, you could watch all three of those, um, and get the whole story, uh, in less time than it's probably going to take them to like retell this on Netflix, you know, you have like, and that's what I, what I was saying and why I just like, I don't like this idea that they have to keep remaking this stuff because you have the, the superior version already you have the definitive version of this like they're they're never going to be able to remake this in a way that d- the the highest level that they're going to be able to reach is that they're going to satisfy like people like me people like jake and be like well thank you for making a faithful adaptation um but it, it does come back to like i'm probably if i'm going to watch it i'm just going to go back and watch the original animated show yeah. Well, I mean, that's the the other point I was going to make is why in Western culture do they view uh, live action mm. at, and let's just yeah. say live action animation. I think that's even a better way to say it because a lot of it is CGI, especially this. So live well, action animation just, as a yeah. superior form of... Just say live action, um, I think is fine because I know it's a lot of CG, but you know we're not talking about uh, Lion King where they're like, oh, this is live yeah. action. And you're like, no, no, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but to where they view this as a superior form of I don't... Uh, over 2D animation, and it's like you had a budget of 120 million dollars. Think if you would have just done a regular, uh, you know, animation like the La- the Last Wish or Arcane, and just continue the story, or did it? I don't know a a, a new story or whatever. And that's the thing is that like there you are a lot of stories like, to tell. This. Yeah, there are so many stories that they could tell. Um, there are novels about other avatars. Um, you know, uh, it, there, yeah, there's a lot that you could have done. And again, I, I understand like they're doing it for the content. Like it's gonna, it, a lot of this is going to continue to happen because, uh, we have to keep consuming brand recognition, the, you know? Yeah. Um, they have to try Like Netflix has to try to keep their platform relevant all the time. It's the brand recognition. You're right. Um, it's why remakes constantly keep happening. It's just like, it's kind of the, um, the thing that's that sucks about that industry and it's funny because like all typically it uh, you know on one hand when it comes to uh movies and television i'm really annoyed by remakes but when it comes to video games it's like the only stuff that i play like modern stuff uh not not right now actually because you know hell divers is out and um it's a it's a blast uh but a lot of the stuff that I played last year and the stuff that I'm kind of looking forward to this year, it's all just remakes of old games. Yep. And because of the, so much of the content is crap because you got Sweet Baby Stink involved in it. Yeah. And these other companies. Ooh, dude, killed it. I finally sat down. I can't remember if it was last weekend or weekend before, but I was working on some other stuff. And so I put on Mauler's like, whole playthrough of uh, Kill the Justice League. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause, and Because I, I was like, I don't know what it is, but like it, that Kill the Justice League for me is just one of those like fiery car wrecks that I just haven't been able to look away from, you know? Yeah. And someone is just telling you like, "Hey, turn away," and I'm like, "I can't. I have to see every little like detail of this. <laughs> I I, need, I I don't know what it is, but like it's just one of those car wrecks that I find really really fascinating. Um, because it's really it's such a trash game, dude. Um. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I um, I don't know who the show's made for. Um, it's not necessarily kid friendly. I mean, like they're burning people alive in it, yeah. like on camera. <laughs> and I, I and, was thinking that I was like, isn't this supposed to be a kid show? Yeah, and and then like there's there's like a tiny bit of cursing in it, nothing like crazy, but they're just moments where it's like. They do stuff in it that I'm like, I feel like you guys are really trying to be edgy with this. But then I'm thinking to myself, like, who is this for? You know, but you got you got to know your content and Avatar isn't the show to be edgy with with kids. Not that you should necessarily do that anyway. No, there's there's but a, there's a lot of if mature, you're going to this isn't it. There's a lot of mature stuff in the show, things that they talk about, events that they allude to. Um, but it's a lot of stuff that they don't show. And again, yeah, I think part of that is because of, they, you know, okay, for instance, right? Like, uh, we've we've talked about um, in the past, like, the restraints that some filmmakers have. Like, say, like, Peter Jackson or, um, 
uh, even like um, Joss Whedon on like Buffy and Angel and other things. Like you're always going to have like certain restrictions in your shows or your movies, and it's supposed to help kind of like elevate the content because you have to figure out ways how to do all of these different things. Um, and that like doesn't that doesn't happen anymore. Um, and some of that is because it seems like these budgets are so bloated. Bloated. That they yeah. don't have to figure out problems anymore. Everything can just be solved. Yeah. Um, they don't have to really think of think it through. They can just get on Chat GPT. Yeah, and man. Some of the yeah, some of the CG in this. I was telling them, I was like, it feels AI generated to me. Just like some of the work that they did on it. It's weird. Yeah, um, text to prompt, text to video. That's yeah, what I yeah. I don't know. It's it's weird. <laughs> um. Yeah, what's the, it just wasn't that memorable. I, I know that um what's his name? General Iro and uh Prince Zuko. Zuko their yeah. their dynamic at first it was really odd as the season progressed. It kind of started it's, to work more for me. Yeah, it got better as it progressed, but well and that's you know, a, out, that's the thing is like I yeah, I think I would agree with that. Um I don't really mind a lot of uh Sokka in this, you know. Um I think his whole like, like it's weird because they took a, they I don't know if you remember this but I cuz I can't remember if we talked about it on the show but they he's got like he's like a sexist or whatever you know yeah uh, and in reality he's just like a 14 year old boy that likes girls and has you know he hasn't seen a lot of the world um so he he makes a lot of like stupid comments and he learns from those things throughout the course of the show uh, and really like grows up you know what i mean um kind of it, the person that he wants to be in episode one of uh the original show is pretty much who he is by the time it concludes right. um that's his arc he's and it's it's pretty great um and you know he he's like good with the ladies like that 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 whole deal um and i his his like chemistry with um her name slip in my mind uh the girl in that second episode um oh yeah what's her name uh, uh the warrior the, um, kyoshi, the kyoshi warrior, warrior. Yeah, her name's i'm pulling it up right now because okay if i can find here it is um i was like i again i've got a lot of problems from like a perspective of like where the original show was coming from and i don't like that they messed with a lot of that um but the two of them have decent chemistry together yeah, uh, they actually did. She she was actually one of the more standout actors in the show to me. I should say yeah. actresses, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to see. She's only in that one episode. She probably doesn't. Um, that was it. It's just the one. Oh wait, I think I found it. Hang on. Oh no no no, that's Avatar Kyoshi. Um. Her name's living in my mind. Anyway, I I thought that the two of them and and the guy the, the guy that plays Sokka, I don't know if it's because he's a little bit older than the rest of the cast, um, but he's pretty good, uh, for what they gave him. You know, like he's trying. Yeah. He you he's I trying. I can see there's like, okay, you kind of at least underst understand like some of who Sokka is supposed to be. But they take away so much of his character, like they do with everybody else, um, that there's not a ton of growth there. And then, like, you know, I there's as aspects of him that I liked where he, um, the stuff where he feels the need to keep the village in order, and that no one else, like he doesn't have anyone else that's helping him to do that. Um, but they don't really go into a lot of that once they leave the village. Um, none of that really carries over into anything else that he's doing. Um, and it all seems kind of clunky anyway the writing with that and uh, yeah with, yeah, yeah it doesn't it doesn't fully I, I there's pieces of it that i see and it's why i'm kind of with you when you say like halo is definitely worse um oh no this is uh, her yeah. what is this what is her name halo is definitely worse than this i mean by far yeah worse i mean i think there's more logic in this show things that flow than than with halo um but, yeah, at least like the writing in a lot of ways is simple enough that you see like the the moment to moment the direction they're trying to head. Yeah. And with Anga with Katara, her name's, Su her name's with, Suki, by the way. 
Suki. Okay. Yeah, no With episode. child actors, there's a way for I'm sure there's a way for the showrunners, the directors, to be able to help out and um, redo scenes so that it functions better and their acting comes across better. Oh, for sure. And that's that's one in, of the, the problems the with it for sure. Um, I, I Katara's actress, like all of her dialogue falls so flat. Um, and to be honest, it's a talent thing, but it also is a direction thing. Um, there's a lot that can be, uh, and and honestly, some of it might be editing. Um, I'd have to go back and watch some of the stuff, uh, particularly like early on in the show. Um, I, I almost feel like she, it's almost like she's not very comfortable at, at the beginning with her ability to act, and then like as the show progresses, she gets like minutely better. Uh, yeah. but then like, dude, there's the freaking like, uh, Northern Water Tribe Avengers Endgame moment with all the women. Dude, I was dying. I just, I was like, I can't believe you did that because it doesn't. It's like again, they do it because they're trying to uh have this like girl power moment, but it's like it doesn't make sense in the context of your show. No, it doesn't. You're you're doing this just um well, out of like a pride thing instead of it making sense for the show. Yeah, and the setup for it and the payoff doesn't it, it just doesn't oh, work and doesn't make sense at all. It's, it's too hilarious. forced. If this was a better show, um well, you know, you would that 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 sexism from Master Paku would come out in well a lot more subtle ways too. Paku like the thing is is that the and Again, it's like this is the problem with like quote unquote modern writing um, is that they're taking uh, a culture and and a time period that is like completely different from ours. They have like different standards for a lot of things. So you have like the Northern Water Tribe, and they have this like very traditional um, way of thinking about things: the men and the women, um, and the way that like Sokka, no, so- sorry, Katara, like comes in, and all of a sudden like convinces all of the women that they want to be warriors instead of healers um is it's really dumb and then it it's funny because master paku basically tells all of them like uh i think they need some help over there so why don't you just go over there and leave me alone (laughs) this is basically his response to the situation um well they were just trying to show kataka breaking the ice ceiling you know uh I, and it's just it's oh my god oh dude yeah. and when she like the one of the things that, that I think the thing that almost sent me over the edge is when um you know like all that stuff happens or whatever and all all of these people from the Northern Water Tribe for some reason are now going Master Katara Master Katara and I was like what I was like she's not why are you guys calling her that I was like she's well, that's not, not a, even cheesy that's she, just bad yeah it's bad and then someone goes like oh um. You know, so I can't remember exactly what they ask him, but there's some sort of like interaction. And then she's like, basically, she goes, I actually, I taught myself. I'm my own master or whatever. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I'm done. Oh, I'm done. That sent me over the edge. And it's probably because that was one of the last things. I didn't quite finish the last episode before technically Mexican stream last night. And I think that was the thing that sent me over the edge where I was like, I'm done with the show. I was like, it went from being like, hmm. I think it's not that bad, but I can kind of like under. I, I'm a little more understanding to the point of being like, nope. I was like, mm, no way. I was like, this does not get a pass. Um, it's too ridiculous. It's it just like uh, all of the sort of like ideological stuff that infects so much um, television these days. Uh, it, it puts it in there and it ruins your narratives. Um, and they they just these writers can't help themselves. They cannot help they themselves can. to continue to do this stuff, and and they I'm don't like, know how to implement it either yeah. in just a natural way into the story because it's if you want to have that dynamic in that in narrative, that's fine, but don't write it in such a comically bad way. Yeah. At least let it flow more maturely. Because if I remember correctly, again, wasn't able to finish um, season one of the show, yeah. the cartoon show Avatar. But if I remember correctly, you know, that dynamic is there with Master Paku and her, but it flows better. There's respect there. Um, yeah. the, oh, by the time that arc is done, there's mutual respect between the two of them. Yeah. Um, Which because, is as it should happen, because no one's saying you can't have that, you know, uh, storyline and 
that part there, that Master Paku and the North tri- Tribe are... No, you just need to co- you need to do exactly what was done in the animated one. And if you're going to add anything, it needs to be in relation to what the original subject material did. Well, it's like you said earlier, they just break through character arcs and development so fast. Yeah. It's just... She doesn't... Uh, he doesn't even There's no up, development there. Yeah, he never actually ends up training her. Um, and, you know, they... Again, it's a, it's a situation but that because of the conflict between the two of them, because of the um, the results of that, and because of her training and, and how you get to see, you, you get to see a little bit of, um, in the short amount of time that you're given, um, you get to see the growth that uh, Paku and Katara have and the respect that they ultimately end up having for each other. Um, it's satisfying. It works well. It helps with Katara's character because she, her her growth is earned. Yes. Her 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 ability to um, control water bending and you know ultimately be like a very strong water bender, um, it's earned. And um, it's kind of funny teaching young girls. But that he, yeah, well that's they I don't guess, need anyone; they can just learn on their own. Yeah, and that's the thing is that the show is really, uh, and I don't know if a lot of people. What's up, Whoopa? Um, the pop culture is like, wow, you guys are braver than me. I wouldn't give this show two seconds of my time. I've already watched the cartoon, and it's all you need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, man, like it's it's antithetical in a lot of ways to the original show because it's trying to make Aang believe that he doesn't need anybody else when that's not what's being taught through the entire season. It's like he's supposed to be learning how to trust his friends and the people around him that he doesn't have to be alone. Um, yeah, and, and they just try to force in all this stuff that, that doesn't make sense. Uh, and not only not only that, you can show with Katara, you can have that storyline, but then also show her growing in, in her power and yeah. her ability to overcome things in a way that, guess what, not only connects with women, but guys can relate to, too, and their own struggles to overcome certain stereotypes or sure. certain uh, I, hardships in their lives and, and everything you know it doesn't have to be this um but the thing is man it's like i don't i don't even they're a typical woman empowerment yeah um, well i don't need every i don't need katara to be like you know a stand-in for me in in interpersonal relationships in my life like i all i want is for them to write a character that's interesting to see on screen that that you get to follow through that you begin to like um because of that growth and and the way that they learn and they they grow stronger or they you know her big thing is she has to learn control she has to learn how to control her powers more than it is like becoming stronger because they already present her as being strong but because she doesn't have a teacher she doesn't have anyone to show her how to wield the abilities that she has you know well and it's that's that's the thing is like i it's just like you know yeah you can have that stuff in in those and i mean there's definitely like there will always be characters that people will relate to uh, more than others, right? Um, people may like certain characters the same, but some people are going to attach, um, or they're going to grow attached to some more than others, which is totally fine. Um, it's just like the irony in trying to create like all of this, like this diversity or these like quote-unquote strong female characters it's like this stuff has been going on forever like every time they bring out a show um like remake like this and they're like oh we're doing this or this is different or whatever it's like you're just making inferior versions of something that was already uh, a very strong character um yeah across the board um and it's just it's like this is the stuff that's like exhausting or it's like uh, like why do you guys keep like tripping over yourselves to do this I, you know they kind of have to right i mean like we we all know about like their um their check boxes at this point uh and the yeah. stuff that they're required to do like it's not even a um it's not a question of if it's even a thing it's like it is and it, it's like it's almost like how much can they get away with not having to do you know um and it sucks because then like every time you see certain um actors in roles now it's like was this just because it was required by a checkbox or, or did they earn were they this? yeah or were they the best person for the role yeah um and then that's an unfortunate thing that having stipulations like that bring up yeah know? yeah because then you everyone begins to to question that or 
assume it and point directly to it and it's just like gross and it's it's something i don't like when, when talking about these things like i, I want to talk about how good something is right they're the quality of like uh the performances or the way that it's directed or the storytelling and the narrative or the narrative like that's the stuff that i i and we you know we talk about this all the time that's the stuff that i want to talk about i don't need every time we we do this i don't need to have a big discussion about like dei and wokeism and <coughs> excuse me and like all that yeah like i, I just get focusing on the narratives and the plot yeah. and the <coughs> Let's talk uh, about what character arcs doesn't... Yeah. The cinematography, the editing, sound mixing, etc. It's more sure. interesting. But then you have situations to where it you can't help but point it out because it's just so clear that this is just the primary, this is the caboose of this entire story is their ideology. It's the same thing, you know, when talking about the rings of power, them inserting their postmodernism <laughs> ideology into it, into a traditional word that uh, it just doesn't it doesn't work, yeah, and, and and with here it's like they're changing things. They're doing that, and with the Earth Tribe and um, with the sibling love, I think it is. Oh. I know on technically Mexican stream, he was saying it was um, uh, lesbian love, but no, no, I no. thought it was no, no, no. So, oh, you mean the uh, the two women? Yeah, the two women. I thought it was sibling. I th- okay. I remember that you having that comment there. I guess I would have to go back and watch it again, but I assumed lesbians as well. Okay. Um. And I th- that is partially because, but I could see where you're coming from, only because Katara and uh, Sokka. That's what quote unquote saves them, even though that's not how it works in the show at all. And again, the show like it's actually in season two, like that whole being stuck in the mine or in the tunnels thing. Mm -hmm. Um, is like season two, episode two. So it was really weird for them to bring that in when there's so many other good episodes in season one that they could have pulled from for content, you know? Um, And the original show's a lot funnier with that because that like weird band of um, nomads that they meet in the tunnel, um, they actually get stuck with Sokka in that episode. And so he's like, trying to take this seriously and find his way out and there's just these like minstrels behind him constantly playing music about what's happening um and it's just a fun like lighthearted joke which is something that yeah. the show is severely lacking like any all the jokes in it are not very good and then there's just a lot of it it was getting into well, like Zack Snyder territory for me where I was like why is this uh, show yeah. trying to be so edgy yeah. well what I was gonna say is, is that with the the reason why I brought up uh, with the Earth Tribe, uh, the the sisters or the the lesbian lovers, I guess, uh, was that when you do something like that, you can't help but notice it, and it kind of it takes you out because why are you making that change? What's the point of it? Because it it's unnecessary. You know what I mean? And so yeah, uh, there's times and situations where we, where we you and I bring it up because it's just so on the nose. You can't just. Yeah, Avoid it's it. it's yeah, it's uh, yeah the the ladies coming together at the end of Avengers Endgame lame, and you just like it, it's right in your face, or like playing uh, or the playing, ice uh water the water lady benders coming together <laughs> uh, in yeah. like two or, days to fight, or the stuff in like uh there's just the scene in um Madam they've Web. been training all this time yeah like the scene in Madam Web where like the male character is like beating up women and they're playing toxic in the background. <laughs> and then like the, the director is like, Oh no, I just really like this. The like Britney Spears. And I'm like, okay, dude. Yeah. Okay. Um, we was asking if Sokka is super lame in the show. Um, no, he just doesn't, he doesn't have a lot of character. He doesn't have a lot to work with, too. Yeah, there's just not a lot to work with, with the, most of the main cast. Um, so he's not, you know, it, he, he doesn't get to like mature and grow into the person that he wants to be. Um, he just kind of, they're just, they're moving way too, th- way too fast with their character arcs. And I just don't know, you know, cause this, uh, I was asking technically Mexican, like, is this renewed? Like, are we getting a season two? And he said that he thinks they're already starting to shoot it. Um, doesn't have a lot of character. I mean, that seems the definition of lame. Yeah. I, well, I guess, Maybe I'm just trying to like search for stuff in the show that I, I didn't find to be horrendously bad, and like his actor's just not bad. He just doesn't he doesn't have a lot to work with, um, unfortunately. Uh, 
and the best stuff uh, that he does is that his relationship in episode two, and then I don't know the rest of the season. Yeah, he he everything just sort of gets worse as the show progresses. Um, yeah, which is weird to say, I think, but they needed to stop and have more kid oh. moments and less of Aang agonizing consistently and, showing us him literally giving us the words yeah i, I am agonizing over being that he, avatar. yeah he's like i just want to be a kid and i don't want to do this and, and it's like oh thank you for telling us all all of this in the first 10 minutes of the show rather than letting us discover this as time goes on or thank you for telling us for the hundredth time in episode yeah. by episode eight that that's how he feels. His, we were completely unaware. Yeah, who knew? And they do that a lot, dude. Where like certain situ, I can't remember what it, I wish I should have. I should have written it down. There's a scene later on in the in the show where like a, a certain character, uh, like something happens, and then another character literally comments and says, "This thing just happened," and you're like, "Yeah." Yeah, we we saw that. I love the grandma in episode one. Was it in episode one? She gets up and just gives this narrative spill randomly about the Avatar. That oh, just, well, no. So that's it the did not work. Well, that's the opening of the series, the original series. So it's the yeah. it's like their your opening like title or whatever, and it's there because that's just your here is the the world that you're jumping into. Get, yeah, here's no, like a, I get that. Yeah, it's it, just the delivery. Oh, it's bad. And everything yeah, just yeah, it's bad. It just it just seems so random and out of place. It is. Yeah, and it's just there to be like, hey, remember this? Yeah, jangling keys, dude. That's all it is. It's yep. a lot. There's a lot of that in this show. That um, made me crack up, dude. I was. I just. I was. I was, I was just like, oh, bro. There were so many times, like, oh, brother. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Um. Anyway, man, I don't. I don't know what else to to really say about it. I'm I'm sure I've missed some stuff, but like, oh, I, I won't go into it too much. But like, Boomy and his whole arc is bad. It's just straight up bad. Um, it's complete, oh, it's completely different from the show. It undermines again Aang being the one who needs to learn how to be the Avatar, not him going around in season one teaching everyone else how to be better people. Um, he's such a dude. Aang is such a goody two shoes in the show, and it. Oh, it irritates me so much. Like he's borderline a Mary Sue in the show. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm sure I could, you know, because of him like running away at the beginning. I guess you technically couldn't call him one. Um, but so much about him just like reeks of that. Uh, because he just he comes out of all these situations because he's just like so much better than everybody else. Um, and none of that ever works against him. Um, and it, I just I hate it so much. Um. It's irritating. Um, I think I think a good way for me to describe the scenes and the episodes of the season is they don't work in harmony with each other. There's no yeah. they seem disconnected to me, and yeah. there's no thread through them. And you know there are I it, it's maybe it's a a product of the original show, but like there are definitely uh there are standalone episodes in the show that like if you missed that episode you're probably going to be okay moving forward. But there are quite a few episodes where you learn about uh, characteristics of different characters. Um, so, like, Commander Zhao, uh, again, going back to the episode where Aang is trying to learn firebending for the first time and he burns Katara, uh, you also learn a lot about uh, Zhao's character in that and how um, hot-headed and um, just... Uh, short-sighted he is like he's kind of a big brute and he's not very smart which is like again talk about a total character change from uh, one show to the other uh, he's someone described him as like Littlefinger on uh, Technically Mexican's podcast yeah that was good um, because he's not that at all you know yep. um, he's more uh, of just like a brute um, he's just trying to stomp his way through everything he doesn't care who I, hurts I thought what, what they meant know. I guess I, I... I was thinking that what they meant was they were trying to have him act like Littlefinger. I mean, maybe, but like be that's, that character. Yeah, maybe, but like that's closer. But to, they failed at it. Well, that's closer to who he. he, he that would be a, a a a comparison that you could give to the version of him in the live action. That that's kind of maybe what they were going for. But the thing is, it's like that's not who his character is at all. So like that character mm. in the live action, like that's not Zhao. Um, mm. and he, you know, he. 
he just doesn't make the same choices and it's it's weird for what like what they were going for I, like I don't know why they went that way like he's supposed to be this big intimidating brute and that's that's what kind of works with his character like and um, you get to learn about that and it builds his character because ultimately when they get to um, the northern water tribe you kind of understand why he ultimately loses um, because he goes too far and um, it, that also is what leads into um, uh, uh, Uncle Iroh and Zuko essentially becoming outcasts of the Fire Nation by the time like season two rolls around. Like all of that kind of interplays together, and it works so well in the, sh- in the animated version. And this, it's just like it's stupid. Um, he stabs the fish, which isn't what he does originally. Like he's a firebender, he burns the fish. <laughs> you know, like why is he gonna use? It's so. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Why is he using a knife when he could just? He sh- yeah, he like, it. like originally that a was flaming hot fish. Yeah, he was gonna like basically cook the fish. Um. <clears throat> and for some reason he holds a knife to it and I'm like that that feels like so Hollywood to me that they're like oh it has to be like a knife to the throat or whatever and I'm like y'all he shoots fire out of his hands he doesn't <laughs> he really doesn't need to do that comes in handy a lot there's a lot of times in the show I was like why aren't they bending right now why isn't this happening why is this why did this show get made when it's already been made why do we need to see, see the same retelling just in live action instead of well, it's this thing, dude. I probably, a better form of 2D animation. This is another one of those shows that, like, if we weren't doing this, I probably would have cut it off after the first episode and never gone back. Maybe two episodes. Oh, dude. Because I watched the first two. I think I watched the first two on Thursday and was like, ugh. I was like, I need to do something else. I was like, I'm already not really into this. Um, And that probably would have been the end of it if we had not been covering it. You know, I don't think I would have made it through the first episode. I think I would have turned it off halfway through. It's just kind of like this is, you know, and it, it would have been one of those things. It's like I'm just gonna go back and watch the original. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm glad we get Shogun tomorrow. Ah, yes. It's the first two episodes. First two episodes, Sweet. and then I'm after actually, that, I'm it's looking forward uh, to that. one episode a week. There's ten episodes, so for the next nine weeks, All we'll right. be covering Shogun and some movies interspersed between then and then. Uh, for the last few episodes, we get a uh, Fallout April fifteenth. So. Okay, man, that's that's coming fast. So yeah, I was thinking we do episodic reviews of Shogun, and then the same thing with Fallout. Sure, I'm probably gonna have a lot to say about Dune though, so we probably need to figure out what we're gonna do. Um, oh yeah, for next week because Dune is like a three hour movie. Um, oh yeah, and I'm really lo- I'm looking forward to that more than I am Shogun. If I'm being totally honest with you. Oh, I'm kind of looking forward to both of them the same. And uh, if so, I'm being honest with you, so, which I'm not, so we'll we'll yeah. I mean, like I I definitely wanna I want to talk about you know the Shogun stuff, but gotta figure out how to use our time properly, structure it. Yeah. Um. But I I'm good if you are, man. I don't I don't really know what else to say. Like I can't recommend it. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna watch, if you've never seen Avatar before, like just watch the original. Yeah, so much better. The animation is, it holds up really well. Well, yeah. I don't understand why people sleep on two D animation. Um, I, I don't know what it is, man. Some people are just completely turned off by animated stuff. It doesn't matter, dude. It could be like the greatest piece of fiction ever put to screen, but if it's animated, people just won't watch it. I, I really, I don't understand. You know, um, I plan on watching Iron Claw this week. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I need to finally sit down and watch that. Um, I know Drinker put out a review and really liked it, and I figured it was going to be good. Like everybody that had seen it said that they liked it. Um, That's what I've heard. Nothing but good things about it, and I didn't get one single Oscar nominee oh, nomination. Well, you know why? Oh yeah, <laughs> old look, Pell and Stell. Look at the cast. <laughs> That's what I said. Old Pell and Stell. Oh, heard, heard. Well, not all of them aren't old. Let me phrase that. Fair Just Pell and Stell. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you good? Are we good? I'm good. All I'm right. good. Well, thank you all so much for listening to episode 164 of The Underground. Uh, we'll be back next week. We're going to be talking about Dune Part 2 and um, uh, Shogun. And I may or may not pop into Technically Mexican stream next week just to say hello to them and 
see what, what they were because they didn't finish all of Avatar. Oh wow! Yeah, Lucky they were them. only doing the first four episodes, and then they're doing the next four next week. Um, and I just uh, went. I, I, I went. Are you guys watching Dune? Like, are you gonna <laughs> are you gonna watch Dune? <laughs> um. So uh, yeah, I might. It just depends because they do that so late. It's really hard for me to to stay yes. up like that when I have to get up so early in the mornings. I'm right there with you because I wake up early myself. Um, so we'll see if I if I can do like a quick hello, be there for like half an hour and and be done, then I I might I might try to pull it off. But thank you um to him for for having me on and and trying to get Joseph and I on. Um, you know I I hope that maybe we'll be able to get some more guests on this year. We just got to try to. F- it's really hard to schedule that stuff. Um, yeah, I was yeah. thinking about asking technically. Uh, when he want to come on? Yeah, he, yeah, definitely. Our um, you know, and uh, just sending him our schedule. He's welcome anytime, and you know, um, hopefully we can we can figure out how to get some more people on. I just, w- you know, it's like with with our schedules, uh, it's hard for me to to be able to like get in contact with people and work out times. And um, there's always there's already so much going on. Um, and I wish it was a lot easier for people to kind of just like drop in. Um, yeah. And, uh, that's why I want. That's why I want to tell people like, hey, we're gonna do the podcast, but however long you can stay, it's yeah, fine. stay and then leave. Like that's what I did. I mean, I was there for about an hour and a half. I told him an hour, and then I ended up staying longer because I just I couldn't help it. I wanted to. I wanted to keep yeah. talking about that stuff. Um, it's fun. So uh, yeah, man. Well, uh, until next time, y'all. Uh, take it easy, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>